So we're going to be doing part two of experiment one where we purify salicylic acid. Before you get started, the first thing you want to do is get some distilled water. You get this from the white tap, not the green or red ones at the front of the lab, and put it onto your hot plate to start heating up. When we're doing our solubility, we want to make sure that the solvent is hot but doesn't pass its boiling point. So since water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to set our hot plate to around 3.5. Each hot plate is a bit different, but 100 degrees Celsius is around 3.5, so you can adjust the knob between 3 and 4. Just make sure that you're watching your hot water to make sure that's not boiling. Once you have that set up, we're going to weigh out our salicylic acid containing the colored impurity. So using your balance, you're going to get a beaker and place it on the balance and we're going to zero the reading. Once it displays zero, we can then weigh out approximately one gram of our salicylic acid. You want to make sure that you don't get any of the salicylic acid around the balance, otherwise your reading will be inaccurate. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit more or less than one gram. It's not analytical chemistry. All that is important is that you record the reading on the display because you'll need that number for your percent yield at the end of the lab. Once you have the reading, you can remove your salicylic acid and we're going to start to dissolve it in our water. So when we're doing recrystallization, it's important to use a minimum amount of solvent. So we're going to start with only about 20 mils of hot water. So we can measure that out. When you're not using the water, you want to make sure that you keep it on the hot plate so that it stays hot. So we'll add this to our salicylic acid. And to help it dissolve, we're going to place it on the hot plate and swirl it. Now we're going to add about two mils of water using our pastor pipette until our compound fully dissolves in the water. Make sure that you record how much water you're adding to your compound to get it to dissolve. So with each pipette, we add about one mil. Continue to add water until your compound completely dissolves. You just gently swirl the beaker intermediately to help your compound dissolve. You don't need to use a stir rod or a spatula. So once your compound has completely dissolved in the minimum amount of water, we're then going to add an excess of about 50%. So it took us about 30 mils to dissolve this solution, so we'll add an extra 50 milliliters approximately. This will just ensure that our salicylic acid stays in solution and won't precipitate. To remove the colored impurity, we're going to add activated charcoal. To do this, ensure that your solution is not boiling. So if it's boiling, you can remove it briefly from the hot plate. However, make sure you don't leave it cooling too long, otherwise your salicylic acid will immediately precipitate from solution. So we're going to add about one spatula full of charcoal to your solution. So about a spatula tip worth. Just swirl that around and place it back on the hot plate. You can see whether or not you've added enough charcoal. If when you look through the solution, you see any yellow through the charcoal particles. Now we're going to filter off the charcoal containing the colored impurity, but allow our salicylic acid to go through the filter so that we can obtain pure salicylic acid. You'll obtain a large filter paper from your TA and you're going to set it up in your funnel by folding it in half once then in half again. 
Then open up one side of the filter paper to create this cone shape. You can then fit this into your glass funnel and into another beaker that's clean. Then using some of the hot water that you still have on your hot plate, you're gonna wet the filter paper with this hot water so that when we pour our solution in, the salicylic acid stays in solution. So just put a little bit of hot water around the funnel like that. Now slowly, a few milliliters at a time, we're gonna pour our solution through the filter paper. Don't add too much at a time, otherwise the salicylic acid solution will cool and again precipitate on the funnel. We wanna make sure that it goes through the filter paper into our beaker, so we have to keep it hot at all times. So make sure this is staying on the hot plate during this filtering. So continue to add a few mils through the filter paper at a time. And you can see that the solution coming through the filter paper is clear. It has none of that yellow impurity and no charcoal. Once you've filtered the entire solution through the filter paper, to ensure you get the maximum amount of salicylic acid, you can use some of your hot water, still on the beaker, to rinse out the original beaker and the filter paper. So you can use just a few mils of hot water to rinse the beaker. And then you can put it through the funnel, rotating around to rinse off the filter paper of any salicylic acid that may have precipitated onto the paper. Now we can turn off the hot plate and we're gonna set aside our pure salicylic acid solution to cool at room temperature. If within a few minutes you don't see any precipitation occurring, that probably means that you have too much solvent, so you need to put this solution back onto the hot plate to allow some of the water to evaporate. You'll allow it to cool at room temperature to allow the crystals to precipitate from solution. You should start to see crystals appear like this. Once it's cool to touch, you're then going to put it on an ice bath to allow maximum precipitation. To make an ice bath, you'll take a couple handfuls of ice into a beaker and then add some water. You don't want to put your beaker straight on ice. You want a nice ice bath. Then you can immerse it in the ice bath and leave it for a few minutes to allow maximum crystallization. After a few minutes, we're then gonna take this solution containing our nice salicylic acid crystals and we're gonna filter it by suction to collect our product. So to do this, we're gonna set up a filtration flask. So you'll need a filter flask a Buckner funnel, some vacuum tube, and a small filter paper, which you'll get from your TA. First, you'll set up your filter flask and clamp it in your fume hood. Then you can attach the vacuum tubing to the filter flask. The other end you'll attach to our vacuum unit. Right. 
Then you'll place the Buckner funnel with the rubber adapter onto the top of your filter flask. And you'll get your filter paper and place it into the Buckner funnel. To ensure a good seal, you can add a few drops of cool water to the filter paper. Now you can turn the suction on. To do this, you will turn the right air knob here. Then you're going to turn this stopcock on the vacuum tubing so that it's parallel to the tubes. This will open up the vacuum to the filtration flask. Now we can add our salicylic acid to the filter paper. Try to put as much of the compound through the filter paper and all the water will be removed leaving our salicylic acid into the Buckner funnel. When you're finished, you can turn off the vacuum by turning the stopcock so that it's perpendicular to the tubing. And now we're gonna use this water that has gone through into the filter fat flask to rinse out the beaker so that we can remove the remaining salicylic acid. So to do this, just remove the hose from the filter flask, unclamp it, Pour this liquid into your beaker and set this apparatus up again. Right, so you'll apply the suction again. Again, just turn the stopcock. and you can rinse out any remaining salicylic acid. Finally, you can rinse your salicylic acid with some cold water. Once it is dry, you can then again turn off the vacuum and turn off this knob. Remove the hosing. Now you are gonna take a plastic beaker that you'll obtain from your TA. You're gonna label it with some label tape with your name, the name of the compound, the experiment, the date, the day that you do your lab, and whether it's AM or PM. You're going to find the weight of this beaker, because you'll need it for when you weigh out your compound. Then you can remove your salicylic acid along with the filter paper and put it into the plastic beaker for storage. In a day or two, your compound will be completely dry. You can remove the filter paper and then weigh this compound and determine your percent yield.